Rotor controllers are mostly boring. Hold down a couple of buttons, twist a knob, maybe even click a mouse, but at the end of the day, they're mostly boring. That is until now. Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome to the DX Engineering channel. My name is Michael, KI8R. Today we're taking a look at the Arco Rotor Controller from Microham. Let's take a quick look at some of the highlights of this controller. The Arco Controller can replace almost any rotor controller that's available today. It will work with almost any commercially available or homebrew rotor that works up to 48 volts DC or 24 volts AC. The controller has an RF quiet internal linear power supply that works either up to 200 watts or 400 watts. It also has a 7H touchscreen display that can be configured with multiple views, including four user selectable radius settings, and the background can be set up for light, dark, or auto, like a lot of smartphones available today. It can also show the sun or the moon's relative position on the earth, and it will also display the gray line. There are also various ways to turn your antenna, including a touching a position on the map, left or right buttons, similar to a conventional rotor controller, or a knob to select your desired asthma, along with a few others that we'll look at in a, in a couple of minutes. Connectivity is either via USB or RS-232, and USB does not require a driver for any installation. It will work with Mac OS, Windows 10 or 11, and Linux. There's also a built-in LAN port that will allow the controller to be hooked to the internet for firmware updates. The Arco can also be configured to allow VNC access from anywhere in the world by using your computer, smartphone, or tablet. More on that later. If you own a Yaesu or a high gain rotor, connection to the Arco is easy. For the Yaesu 800, 1000, or 2800, simply plug the rotor cable into the Yaesu connector on the back of the unit. For a high gain ham series rotor or tail twister, DX Engineering sells an adapter cable, which makes it simple to plug in. The Arco can also be configured to ramp up and ramp down the rotor speed to reduce stress on the antenna system, tower, and rotor. The controller also allows for up to six different presets that are user-definable. For example, you could have a preset for Europe, the Caribbean, VK, ZL, or JA. Something that is unique to the Arco controller is its ability to connect to other Arco controllers via the link bus cable, your home network, or over the internet. For example, if you have a large station with multiple operating positions and two or more ARCO controllers controlling two or more rotors, you could take control of a remote ARCO controller and turn that antenna from your position. The same goes for operating a remote station. You could have a local ARCO controller linked to a remote ARCO, ARCO controller through the internet. It's possible to have up to 30 controllers linked together. All of these things and a lot more, including a two-year warranty. The Arco controller is definitely not your father's rotor controller. I mentioned earlier that the Arco comes in 200 and 400 watt versions. I reached out to Wemo to find out what rotors would require the 400 watt model and was told that a larger pro system, prop pitch, or homebrew rotor would need the 400 watt version. Now let's take a closer look at the controller itself. The case on the Arco is a black aluminum enclosure that weighs about six and a quarter pounds. On the front, you'll find a seven inch touchscreen, the heading knob, counterclockwise and clockwise buttons, power, fault, and motor LEDs, and the on off switch. On the back, you'll find a link bus port for linking multiple Arco controllers together, a serial RS-232 port, ethernet, USB A and B ports, the digital position sensor port, the rotor connection port, a port for connecting Yaesu rotors, and the ground wire. The front screen is very configurable, so let's look at the setup, which is accessible from the lower left-hand corner on the screen by tapping on the gear icon. The menu structure is laid out well and is reasonably intuitive. Starting with the general tab, you can name your controller whatever you like. In this case, I've called mine G1000 for the G1000 rotor that is connected to it. Just below that is what Arco calls rotor place. This is where you tell the rotor where you are on the earth. You can do this in two different ways, by either inputting your grid square or your latitude and longitude. Below that, you can select miles or kilometers. UTC and date can be manually input or if you have a LAN cable hooked up and use the LAN network time checkbox under the LAN tab, it will do it for you automatically. One other feature I want to point out on this page is park before standby. This is something you might want to use, especially if you're using one of these controllers remotely 
and want to turn your antenna in a specific direction when you're not using it. By setting the standby to any number of hours, in this case 12, after 12 hours of no use, the controller will automatically turn your antenna to a predetermined setting. After that, the display, touchscreen, and CPU will turn off, and the rotor is physically disconnected from the controller. Moving on to the Appearance tab. Under the global submenu, you can set things like the display brightness for day and night, and choose the background for day and night. There are also four zoom settings that you can configure. Each of these can be set to a separate user-definable radius, and let you determine the background colors, along with the ability to show various items on the screen like the sun, moon, and gray line. Next is the rotor tab. Here is where you can tell the Arco what rotor you are using. By tapping on model, you can see a number of brands and rotors. Mine is set to the Yaesu G1000. On the bottom of the screen, you can set whether or not you want the rotor speed to ramp up and down. On a side note, the Arco will support rotors that have more than 360 degrees of rotation, such as the Yaesu. The next tab is heading. Here is where you go through the calibration procedure so that the Arco will know where your antenna is pointed. Next is the LAN tab. Here is where you can enable the LAN connection, if you choose to use it, along with setting up an IP address and can enable a VNC. You can also set up a password for VNC as well. The final tab is the System tab. Here is where you can see what firmware version you are using, update your firmware, and save your configuration. By saving your configuration, you have the ability to reload it in case something gets messed up. Now that everything's configured, let's go back to the main screen and see how everything looks. By tapping on the zoom icon, you can select the zoom settings that you pre-configured. Keep in mind that since I've told my Arco my location, that is now the center of the map. Now let's look at the memory presets. There are six different preset buttons that you can preset for any position that you like. Tapping and holding one of these buttons for more than a second will bring you to the preset azimuth screen. Enter the direction that you want and tap OK. Next, you can name the button with up to six characters. There is still another way to select an antenna heading that we haven't talked about. Tapping the heading on the display will take you to this screen, which will allow you to enter the direction that you want the rotor to go in several useful ways. For example, you can type the direction that you want, the specific DXCC country, or look up by state. Choose a country by WAZ zone, or a country by ITU zone. You can also look up a specific grid square by up with up to six characters. One other thing that I wanted to show you is the Arco has the ability to show a second and even third antenna that could be pointed in different directions. For example, I have a TH11 on top of my tower. Now, if I wanted to add a 40 meter beam and I wanted to minimize interaction between those two antennas, I might point the 40 meter beam 90 degrees to the TH11. The Arco allows for the offset. Now let me show you what this looks like. In the Headings tab, under Antennas, you will see that there is an offset that you can enable. So under Antenna 2, I can name this, that antenna to say 40 and set the offset to 90 degrees. Now this could be either a positive or a negative number. Next, let's go back to the main screen and see what this looks like. By tapping the antenna name, you can now see the second antenna that I've named 40. You will notice that the Arco will add or subtract 90 degrees to the original beam heading, showing where the 40 meter beam is pointing. Tapping this again will allow me to return to the other antenna. Also, if you have a stepper or an ultra beam that can be configured in bi-directional mode, the controller can be configured to work with that as well. In a word, this antenna controller is amazing. I've had this controller on my desk for the last few months and found it to be an awesome addition to my shack. The ability to tap a preset on the touchscreen and have the antenna go to that position is a game changer, especially during a contest. No more holding down buttons and waiting for the antenna to get to where I need it to be. This box offers plenty of eye candy. It's easy to navigate, easy to interface with logging software such as N1MM or Ham Radio Deluxe and others, and it's really just fun. 
The large display gives you the information that you need at a glance so that you can know where your antenna is pointed, where the gray line is, what part of the world is currently in daylight, and having pre six presets available just makes operating that much more fun. At the time of this recording, the Arco sells for $799 US for the 200 watt model and $899 for the 400 watt model. While it's not inexpensive, it does make a great addition to the ham shack. And that's a quick look at the Arco rotor controller. I hope that you've got something out of this. You can find more information on the DX Engineering website, including a copy of the user manual. Thanks for watching. My name is Michael, KI8R, for DX Engineering, and I'll catch you on the next one.